In this video, I will be showing you what happens if you add the one inch overhang measurement or the measurement for your nosing to the stair tread layout measurement when you are laying out your stair stringer. And before we get started, let me share a personal experience that I had when I was sent to do my first model homes. Now these were stairs that hadn't been built before and it was my job to figure out how how to build them after only working with my dad for about a year and a half and the first thing I did was made this mistake I added the one inch nosing to the stair stringer layout and after I cut my pattern to check it I went and set it in place in the building and that was when I realized my mistake because the stair stringer was about 14 inches longer than it should have been and even though that was the last time I made that mistake this mistake was made by somebody recently who was having a difficult time figuring out what they had done wrong. And hopefully by the time you have finished watching this video, you will have a pretty good idea how to avoid making the same mistake. So let's go ahead and get started. Our original tread length is going to be 10 inches and our treads are going to be 11 inches long to provide us with a one inch nosing. And that would look something like this. Over here we have a 10 inch stair tread, seven of them and then on the other side we have an 11 inch stair tread and of course a 7 inch difference between the two of them providing us with a little longer stringer and no nosing if we use an 11 inch tread. Now if you have the room and you want the overhang you just make the tread 12 inches to solve that problem. However most of the time you're not going to have the room especially if the building plans call out for 10 inch treads and you made yours 11 inches. And for those of you who need a little more clarity on this topic, let's go ahead and take a look at the size of the tread. Three quarters of an inch thick and 11 inches long. And the riser, of course, seven inches tall, three quarters of an inch thick. And these will be the same treads and risers we're going to use for the one inch overhang on the stair stringer that should have had a 10 inch measurement here instead of the 11 inch measurement that we have. So pay attention here. We're going to have 11 inches from the corner of the back of the stringer here to the corner of the front and then seven inches for our riser. And keep in mind that your measurements might be different on your stairway. However, you could end up with the same problem if you're not paying attention to the information in this video. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the stringer and replace it with a 10 inch one. However, we are not going to change the position of the treads and risers to provide you with a better idea of what is actually happening. And that would be the fact that we are going to be gaining one inch for every single step. So one inch longer here, two inches here, three inches, four, five, six, and then seven. And of course, here's what it would look like if we had the 10 inch layout measurements on our stringers, along with the 11 inch wide treads, providing us with a one inch overhang. So here we have 10 inches from corner to corner, not 11 inches. And then we have our seven inches. And after we put our risers on, we're still going to have 10 inches. For example, on the bottom, we're going to have 10 inches to the back of the riser if we measure to the back of the lower riser. And if the risers are the same width, obviously we're going to have the same measurement from the front of the riser to the front of the riser. And then when we put our 11 inch tread on, we're going to have a one inch overhang. So again, the same treads we used in the other example where we have an 11 inch and a seven inch. And of course they are three quarters of an inch wide, providing us with our one inch overhang. Next up, let's take a look at how the layout for the nosing might work with having the steps for a winder that die into the center point here. Now keep in mind that some building codes still allow this. However, this is actually the design that the newer building codes would suggest to increase safety. And you can apply the same principles that I'm going to share with you here to this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the stairway would look like without a nosing. So if you're not going to use a nosing, you're not going to need this video and your stairs will look something like this. And if you don't make any adjustments 
to the stairway when laying it out, then it's going to end up looking something like this once you add the nosing. And this design right here, if built correctly, should meet most building codes that allow for this type of design. And when I was building stairs, this is what I ended up with 99% of the time. Why, you might ask? Because this information wasn't available to me ever. I had to figure some of this stuff out on my own. So if I don't make any modifications at all to the layout, you're going to end up with something looking like this at the inside corner here. And even though we've made some changes, the outside corners aren't going to create any noticeable problems. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at what might be involved if we want the nosing to die into the center point and not the risers. And that minor adjustment will simply be to move each one of the steps back the length of the nosing. And this is what it would look like if we did that. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. And I'm going to go ahead and overlay the other layout design. So the other one is this one here from the previous example. And this would be the new one where we moved everything back one inch to allow for our nosing. And you can see here where our risers aren't going to be lining up with the center point over here. However, the treads with the nosings will. So again, the secret here is just to simply move everything back the length of the nosing. And even though it doesn't look like it right here, once I pan up, you can see where everything is going to line up with the center point here. And that's how it's done. And of course, you could finish this corner off with some decorative trim or even some type of a newel post if you don't like the way this finishes over here. You can see where the riser here is coming into this point, but it's not coming into that point over here or over here. And don't forget that our center point is right here going all the way down to here and has not moved over to here. And if all of this makes sense, then I've done my job and you have another tool for your stair building or design toolbox. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.